like I said, they have, I do have one example about generators. Now, if you remember, Jerry, what we did with generators, we sized generators based on, uh, uh, on the software that we have. We have a software and we size generator. Um, this is not what we're going to do right now. If we do have a generator, how are we going to size the overcapitation device and the conductors and the neutral and the main bonding jumper and the grounding conductor? So here's the situation that we have. You guys have this in front of you, everybody? <clears throat> Hand out. Is one. So you have um <clears throat> you have a switch here. Inside the switch here, there's multiple um, circuits and feeders. We have a, 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 a circuit breaker that's tied to a generator, right? You guys can see that branch inside a conduit. And my job. My job, I already know what the size generator I want. I ran Cummins and I came up with this size. My size of my generator is 1344, 1344 kW. The power factor is 80%. I already got all this from the software. You guys remember how we ran Cummins? Piece of cake. From the loads, you come up with a kW. Generators assume power factor 80%, worst scenario. The voltage that I'm using is not, uh, is not common voltage. This is mostly European voltage, but it works for anything. I have 380-220 voltage 36. That's the generator that I'm running. Okay, 380-220 volt 3 phase. My job is to find the following. My job is to find the following. Number one is to find, can you see that number one is the generator. I need to find the size of the generator in KVA, right? Number two, I need to size the overcurrent section device for the generator. Number three, I need to size the conductors for the generator. Number four, I need to size the conduit for the generator, that bringing it to the generator. Number, uh, number, uh, number four. Number five, I want to size the grounding electrode conductor for the generator. And number six, I need to find the system bonding jumper for the generator six things I need to do for the generators. And these are the, the most important things that we guys do for any generator. Cool? Any question guys about uh, what we're doing? So the reason why I picked this example, because Aaron, you guys are gonna end up sizing generator for your building, right? When you size generator for your building, you're gonna have two generators later on when you run it. So how are you gonna size all the conduits, the overcompletion device? I would like you guys to use this example <clears throat> to size the generator feeder for your building, right? The only difference is gonna be the voltage will be 48277 and the KW will be slightly different. But that could be very, very important guys. Use this one as an example for sizing the feeders for your generator. Any comments about what we're doing? Now, if I have another generator right next to it, would it be different? It just repeats itself over and over and over again. Before I go ahead and start, everybody understand what the, what the exercise is? The exercise is sizing feeder for a generator. Uh, when I say feeder, I mean the friction device, the conductor, the conduit, and then I have a separately derived system, so I need the main bonding jumper and the system bonding jumper. Um, Jeff and Joe, my friend, everybody understand that this is the neutral bus inside the generator. This is the ground bus inside the generator. We bond them together. That's bonding the neutral, right? And we size the grounding electrode conductor. That's code requirement for the generators. Any comments, any questions about what we're trying to achieve? Anybody has any question about what we're trying to achieve? Everybody understand the exercise? Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So that's, um, to help us with this, guys, number one, everybody understand, keep referring to number one. Number one, if you look, it's the generator size in KW. That's what I would like you to find. I gave you the generator size in KW. Number one is to find the generator size in KVA. Find the generator size in KVA. Okay, so let's go ahead and size the generators in KVA. To help you guys with this, grab your calculator and the Walt will be handy. So for, um, I'm going to use red here. So in order to find the generator size in KVA, all what you have to do is take the, take the um, load, take your load and divide it by 
take your load and divide it. Take your load, divide it by um, by the power factor. We took our load, divided by a power factor. So um, the load that we have, as uh, in my case, what what was the load? Are we having the same? Oh, okay. Yeah, thirteen forty-four. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I what I meant, guys. Here, there are two ways of doing it. Either I give you the load and you find the, the load and you find the, the generator size, or I will give you the generator size immediately and you continue with it. Right now, I'm actually this exercise giving us the load. We, get, we got the load. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. For the generator size, all what you have to do is take the load divided by the power factor to find the KBS. So take the 1V44, divide this baby by the power factor of 0.8. And if you guys, uh, you came up with 1680KW. This is <clears throat> the KVA, running KVA of the generator that I need. The running KVA of the generator that I need. Did I give you guys the size of the generators? For, for size of the generators, for the size of the generators, you can use um, common software, or I'm going to give you a couple of sizes. If you guys grab uh, Dewalt, so I can I can get it to you, and write them somewhere in um, in Dewalt. I'll give you a couple of sizes. Did um, can you go, um, Jamie? Can you go to page um, go to page three twelve in Dewalt? Did I give you the generator sizes last time? No? Did I give you guys the generator size last time? It doesn't seem like I gave it to you. Okay, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Grab your DeWalt, DeWalt and go guys to, here's where I put them. I put my generator sizes right next to uh, the switch gear, right next to the switch gear. So we'll give you a couple of sizes guys, so you can go right, put it right next to the switch gear, right in there. If you were listening, yeah, page, that would be 3 uh, 13. 3 13. It goes on the test. You're going to be using that on the test. Okay. A couple of sizes. Um, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. How about if I make a copy for you of this one? Because there's a few of them that takes a long time. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, refer to page 3 13. It's not there, but I will make a copy of this one, give it to you. That's will make it easier instead of just. Right. Okay. So then I'm going to go to find the standard size. Then I need to find a standard size generator. Um, so my load is my load. I need then this is step number one. Step number two is to take the 1680KVA, take this baby to Walt 3 12. That's the that's what I'm gonna give you the sizes. It's not there yet. Three thirteen. I put them in three thirteen. Um, and if you guys go there, the next standard is one eight seven five K V A. This is the next standard that they make. The next standard generate. Now, Joe, there are two ways of doing it. Either you get it from DeWalt or you guys remember the software that we had, the common software. Remember what common software Joe, um, Jeff gave us? Remember that gave us KW? So when you size it for our project, when you go to common software, you put your loads in, you came up with 1,000 KW, that's it. That's this number. Done. You don't have to do this step. Did you guys hear me? When we run the software, we don't have to do this step. The immediately the software will give you this particular number, right, from the loads. Cool? So you don't have to do the steps. We have thumbs up, Chad. We understand if we have a software, we this will be coming directly from my software. Cool? But because we don't have the software here, we're going to size it based on the load. Okay, so 1875K KBA. That's the size that we're going to be using. Okay, so that's step uh, step two. We found number one. Number two. Any question, guys, about number one? Number one can be taken directly from the software, directly from the software, and that's that's what we real life. That's what we do carry. We get it from the software immediately. Cool. All right. Overcome temptation device. 
for over protection device, guys, number two is the over current protection device that's going to be right by the generator or right inside the switch gear, either way. So for this particular one, um, here's how you're going to be doing. The first step you need to find is the current. So for my current, I'm going to take 10875KVA. Remember, this is KVA divided by 1.73 times. What's the voltage system that I'm using? I'm using a European voltage system. It's not 480. It's 380. 380. 380. Okay. So here's my voltage system. Not 480. If we, if it's a 480, just put a 480. Really nothing change. This guys will give you 2852M. So we found the amps of my generator. The amps of my generator. So we found the amps of my generator. Okay. The second step that I, I would like to go, guys, is find go to the NEC code book, the article that talks about motors, uh, which is article 445. So if you grab your code book and highlight one thing for me there, please, 45. Okay, generator. So let's go to the one that I want to highlight is 445.13, 445.13 right in here 445.13 if you guys look at 445.13 um it will tell you the conductor size this is right here the amplicity of the conductor if you read through it it tells you not smaller than 115 percent cool highlight this one in your code book just this particular one so not smaller than 115%. That's the conductor size. Now, then when I size my overconfiction device, guys, I size the conductors to match the overconfiction device. So that's why I'm going to be using the 115 here. Did you guys hear me? The reason why I use the 115 for the overconfiction device, because my conductors will be sized based on what? Based on 115. Why not one, why 115, not 125? Because the code says 115. Cool? Then when I size my conductors, the overconfiction device has to match it. So I do it from the get-go. I size the overconfiction device based on this, and then I match my conductor to it. Okay? Then I match my conductors to it. Any questions, guys? Any comments? I want to remind you of another thing if you read right through it. It says the neutral, um, it shall be permitted... Um, to size, can you guys see that one? This is, it shall be permitted to size the neutron conductor based on that. So later on, when we derate the neutral, when we derate the neutral, this is the rule that it shall be permitted to size the neutral based on article 220.61. Who cares? It allows you to derate the neutral for the generator. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? That's where you got this number, not from your basement. This is just that I'm going to justify why I'm going to be using this number. So please highlight it for yourself. Um, okay, I don't think they... Doesn't capture it anymore. Okay. All right, so well, that's not 2800 amps. It is 2800 amps. Yeah. I, I covered the wrong one here. Um, give me one second here. Uh, trying to get that capture deal. Here you go. Okay, all right, so let's go here, guys, uh, right here, and back to the, my overconfiction device. Okay, here's my overconfiction device. Is it wrong? Did you, you didn't multiply by K? Yeah. Yeah, this is a two, a 2852, because there's a K. You guys remember there's a K too? There's a K? Can you pass this one, please? Okay. So what I'm going to be doing, guys, then, 
so the, uh, from my C, we're going to go to 445.13. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, 2852, multiply that baby by this magic number, 1.15. Everybody knows where 1.15 came from? From the code, from 445.13. When you do that, you're going to end up with 3280M. 3280M. That's your end, 3280. Okay, the last step, guys, I want to take my 3280M and size my, go to 240.6 and size my overcome friction device. And if you guys go there, the next overcome friction device size is 400. I mean, 4,000. Non-adjustable. It's a 4,000 non-adjustable. What they do with it there in there is, then they adjust it. They tweak it down. They adjust it. Now, we're assuming it's non-adjustable 4,000. You will never, ever buy a non-adjustable 4,000 amps That's your next standard. So what they do guys, they buy a frame of 4,000 and they adjust that frame down to this value, 3280. 3280. Okay, any questions about this? Can I, so that's the frame. Can you guys put right here? This is my frame, frame size. You're going to hear later on about the frame size. This is the frame size, the frame size. So then what you can do, you can adjust it down to 3280, okay? All right, so let's go back to the next step. Uh, we don't want this one here. Okay. There you go. Feeder size. The feeder size, guys. My feeder size. Um, you can do it two ways. Let's do it the easier way. You can do it the feeder. You can do it two ways. If you have an adjustable circuit breaker. If you have an adjustable circuit breaker, you can size your feeder based on 3280. If that's it. If you don't have an adjustable circuit breaker, which highly unlikely, you size your conductor based on what? The overcompetition device. So we're gonna we're gonna use the worst scenario. I'm gonna use the worst scenario, but be aware that and I want you guys to do it based on the worst scenario. The worst scenario is we have a fuse. Right? How are you gonna adjust the fuse? A four thousand amp fuse. How are you gonna adjust the four thousand amp fuse? You can't. And then how are you going to size the conductor for it? Instead of circuit breaker, a fuse. Non-adjustable. And then you're going to size your conductor based on that one. So let's go ahead and size my conductors. Um, okay. So um, based on this one, I'm going to use, um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to say match over competition device. You can see that. But really, this is the, the worst scenario. So take 4,000 amp divided by, I'm going to use 11 sets this time. I use 11 sets. I know you guys can use 10 if you want to, but my example use 11 sets. I came up with 364 amp, right? 11 sets. If you take the 364 amps, take this one to table. 310.15 B16 <laughs> under 75 degree column Celsius. Um, if you guys go there, it's going to give you 11 sets of um, three conductors, 500 kcm each. 500 kcm each. 11, uh, what type of insulation? It's outdoor, so we use THSW. Typically a big generator like this, guys, 
will be an enclosure outdoor, could be indoor too, and we're coming from underground, so I just use a W. Could it be THHN if it's indoor? Yep. Would the calculation be different? No. Uh, bigger conductors hard to work with, but this is really I can go either way. If you use ten, I I I can go either way. But like we talked about this yesterday, if you put ten, it gives you an even number. So you put five, five bus ducts. So really, there's something to be said about when you space ten, ten of them. You put five at the top, five at the bottom, give you a nice bus duct, even. So anytime you anytime you go over five hundred kPa. But because we're right on the border here, kind of it go either way. <laughs> Some people might pump him into 12 and get like 400 kcm and just make him even. That's what yeah. I would think. Yeah. So that's, but for the time being, as I said, hover. The rule, guys, is hover around 500. Everybody understand? 500 kcm when you pair off. You're going to hover around it. Okay, so the second thing that I'm going, to, I'm going to size, guys, so we size this one. The second thing is a neutral. I need my neutral. <clears throat> neutral uh, conductors. So the, the reason why I said this three because these three are for what? For the phase, the three phase, right? So remember, this sizing is for, I'm going to write right here, for phase conductors. Phase conductors. For the neutral conductor, guys, if you remember, um, I just showed you that it tells you you can apply the derating factor on it. Do you see that one here? 220.61. It tells you that on the neutral, you can apply the derating factor. So that's what I basically I'm going to do. I'm going to derate the neutral. Okay, for derating the neutral, guys, I'm going to use uh, the following. And we did this one last time. I'm going to start with my 400, 4,000 amp. I want to take the first 200, leave it alone, right? Then anything higher than 4,000, uh, 4, 4, 200 minus Q, multiply this by what? Multiply this by 0.7, you guys remember that? And add them up. So 200 plus this math, if you did the math on this, I believe you should end up with 2860. 2860 amps. That would be the size of my neutral. That would be the size of my neutral. Should I repeat it one more time? Neutral size, you take the 4000 amp. Why 4000 amp? That's what we started with with the phases. Take the 200, leave him alone, sacred cows shall not be touched. Anything higher than 200, what do you do with them? You cut them by 0.7, so you take the 4,000 minus 200, multiply by 0.7. Don't forget to add them up at the end. You should end up with 2860. We did this one last quarter too, and we'll continue to size it the minimum. Okay, so now I know what size, what's the amp size that I need. The next step, guys, is to take the 2860, divide it by now. Jamie, do I have option to put 10 here? If I parallel phases 11, do I have an option to parallel 10? No, you're stuck with 11. So I'm going to parallel 11 sets. Cool. So I'm stuck with 11 sets here. If you guys divide it by 11, uh, you should end up with 260. 260 amps. 260 amps. Okay. And then, do I have room in the second page to put some stuff? I just went out of. Work. Okay, then I'm going to go size the conductor. So mind my, the, um, I'm going to take the 200, 260 amps uh, right here, take it to 310.15B16 like we've done, the table. That will give me the following. <clears throat> 11 sets, 11 sets of, uh, did they come up with 300? 
300? Yep, 300. Of how many conductors though? One conductor, 300 kcm thsw. Apologize for the tweaking it at the bottom here. So 11 sets of one conductor, 300 kcm. So of my phase were, my phases were 500, right? And my, my, uh, my neutral is a little bit derated, a couple of steps below it. <clears throat> any comments, any questions, guys? Yes, sir. Where did we get the uh, 200 that we synthetic from 4,000? Good point. Uh, this is, comes from right in here, article 220.61. Yep, that comes from 220.61. Good point. So he, he could just, besides in your neutral, take whatever answer came in step two and size it off of that without the Without the rating? Because he came up with 28.52. Yeah, almost. Yeah, almost. Yep, almost without, yeah, without the multiplying by one. Yeah. Any question guys about your neutral, but it will give you a smaller neutral. In this case, a smaller neutral. Any comments, guys? Any questions about neutral? Any comments? Any questions? Are we gonna test it from once we get test code? Are we gonna have to change it from kilowatt to KVA? Yes, you always have to change from kilowatt to KVA. Well, because the the homework we have it listed that we we give it a KVA instead of kilowatt. If it's given as a KVA, you're done. <laughs> If it's given, if your homework is given as a KVA, you're done. That step is gone. I just didn't find in that the last bus stop the size is like from the 1580 to 1800. Ah, the sizes? How I give it? I'm going to give you the sizes in a size. It's not in DeWalt, I said. I wrote them in DeWalt. Oh, okay. I wrote these. I took them from common software, wrote them in DeWalt. I'm going to make a copy for you guys. Oh. Okay, everybody's aware of that, guys? The size is I'm going to make a copy and give it to you, okay? All right, so step number four, conduit size. I need to size conduits. I need to size conduits, so let's go size conduits. Um, here is the 11 rhymes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's what you guys do for your generator. You have 11 sets, 11 rhymes, okay? Now for the 11 rhymes, each one of these 11 rhymes is going to have three conductors, three phase. It's going to be uh, black, red, blue. These are the three phase. It will have the green as the grounded conductor. And I would like you guys to size the conduit. The conduit. Cool. So number four is we're using rigid metal conduit. We decided to use rigid metal conduit. Could I use PVC? Yes. I put rigid metal conduit. Can I bury rigid metal conduit? No problem. Bring it on. Okay, so let's go size conduit. You guys remember how to size conduit? I have three conductors here. Each one of them is 500 kcm. I did the math for you. And the insulation, oops, I used an insulation here at THHM. Yeah, I'm, I decided to use original conduit. I just hadn't used that one on the, on the calculator. Oh, you haven't used that one? Okay. So, uh, 500 kcm, I'm, oh gosh, I used a, uh, THHN here. We're using THHN. Let's go get it. I, you guys have to help me with that one. THHW. So if you go, can you guys, can somebody go help me here? For, this is chapter number nine, table number five. Can somebody please go to chapter number nine, table number five, and get me the cross sectional area? So then that would be three times the cross-section area for THHW. I have THHN here. Can you guys go there and g give me two gentlemen, agree on one answer? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Okay, seven twenty one. So I can get it. Okay, seven twenty one. Here you go. Okay, so if you guys go there, uh, here's table number five. Uh, chapter table number five. Continue. Okay, you guys have used this one before. Nothing new. Dimension of insulated table number five. Everybody can see that. 
I need to go to THHW. Uh, THHW, it's right in here. Can you guys see the installation THHW? I don't have a THHW here. THHW, um, but the size is big though. THHW right in here, right? This is a THHW. So if you go there, um, and I'm, I'm using this as a review, guys, very quick review. What was the size that we want first? 500? Here's a THHW. Here's the size 500. And the cross sectional area, which one is that we use? The cross sectional area is the um, the last one right here. 0.7901. Anybody disagree? They thought uh, cross sectional area inches. The inches. There you go. Any question guys about this one? So 0.7901. Point seven nine zero. Nine zero one. As long as I'm on it, because I have also a three hundred guys, I'm gonna go do the three hundred. Well let's do the three hundred as long as we're on it. Three hundred give you point five two eight one. Point where am I here chat? Any question about this? Everybody knows how to use this table? Everybody knows how to use this table? That's a quick review. Okay. Yeah, are we right, uh, Darren? Did we do? Yeah. Did we? Okay, I just. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to adjust it, guys. Sorry. I'll write them down in a second here. Let me write them in a second here. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, put that one. So I, I wrote them down. Let's start with, um, with the first one is this will be multiplied by point, point 0.7901. Then, then I also have. <clears throat> I have one conductor, 300 KCM THHW, the same table, because it's one, we multiply it by one, and we're gonna get uh, 0 0.5281. Now I need somebody to help me with do the math here, please. Can somebody multiply them and add them, and I need two people to agree on an answer. 2.9, 2.9. Did you add them, add them up, ball up? What did you guys come up with? 3.498, so 3.5. 3.5 inches, square inch. Anybody? Second? I got 2.9. 2.9? So yeah, 2.9 is it. 2.9 is it. What did you do? 2.9 square inch. What was the yeah, issue? 2.9? Okay, thank you. Everybody agree with 2.9? 3? Then the last step, my friends, is you take the 2.9 square inch. You're going to take it to chapter number nine, table number four for rigid metal conduit. So let's go there and see it. Remember, it's 2.9. Okay, so. Did you guys get uh, table number four for rigid? Anybody's there? Liquid, anybody is a page? Liquid, Inter uh, EMT, slam, is it intermediate? 714? 712? 713? That's liquid though. There you go, thank you. Okay, so when you go here, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
This is the conduit that we're going to be using. Rigid. Huh? It's hard to see it. Grab your code book, guys. Grab your code book. That's where you have to have your code book with you. Grab your code book. So we're looking at uh, over. This is the column. And again, I'm using this as a review one time because you guys, this is the column that we use because we have over two wires, 40% fill. Square inch. And we're looking at 2.9, right, guys? Was it 2.9 that we're looking for? So 2.9, I have 1.9 and 3. This is 3, right? So I have to go 3. This will be 1, 2, 3, 4 from the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4 from the bottom. Is it number 3, right? Am I right here? Am I off? Yeah. Right? 3? Number 3. Okay. So please have your, your uh, code book handy when we deal with this. Calculator came up to three. My calculator is, the computer one is not working today. Okay, so, so from here, my friend, how many, how many though? How many runs? I need 11, um, 11 conduit, three inch rigid metal conduit. 11 sets, 11 three inch rigid metal conduit. That's your answer. 11 of them. 11 of them. Came up with the same answer anyway, with that one. Okay, any question guys about this? This is last time you're gonna see Chad sizing conduits. You have to, so you're gonna size the conduits. Let me know when we can, so my, my conduit here is gonna be three inch rigid metal conduit. Three inch rigid metal conduit. If it was PVC or EMT, would it be different? No. Shall I go to the next one? 3.5, okay. Okay, so we got these, got these. All right, grounding electrode conductor. Grounding electrode conductor, guys. When we size the grounding electrode conductor, here's what you're going to do. I, I might do it go too fast. No? Yes? Go back? You good? Okay. Okay, grounding electrode conductor. GEC, grounding electrode conductor. When we size grounding electrode conductor, you guys have to go to 250.66. So, 250.66. Here's the steps that you need to do. Number one, how many, how, what, what was the size of the phase conductor? 500 kcm. How many sets do we have of 500? 11 sets. So you have to multiply them by 11 sets. That will get you a 5500 kcm, right? That's your, uh, your kcm. Then, step number two, you're going to take the 5500 KCM, you're going to take it to which table? Table 250.66, and that will get you a maximum of one conductor, 3 aught AWG. So, regardless of how high you are, you are at 3 aught. Does it really matter? What's the page, um, Aaron? For the table. For the table. 115. Let me quick here just uh, 115, right? Oops. One. We're, come, we're doing it in a second here. Give me one second. 115. Did you say 115? Not article, page? page. Okay, right here. Okay, let me just take since we're, we'll do it one time, guys. And then, so here's the table. If you have not highlighted this, please highlight it. Now remember, you go over this number. This is where we were. Oh, actually, over this number. Over 1100 KCM, then you're stuck with this. With these two values. Since we're doing copper, that's where this number came to be. Any question guys about how to use the table? I threw these tables right away. Just to give you an idea.
Yes, we're coming to the system bonding jumper. Absolutely. Thank you. So that's my um, so that's my size. My size. No, no, not on the load count. Not on the full load count. I did not ask for it. You can if you want to. Okay, grounding electrode conductor. The last thing we're going to do for this job, for this uh, example, guys, is finding the system bonding jumper. For the system bonding jumper, do me a favor, will you? Um, the article that talks about it is 250.28.1. And 250.30A1. If you guys go to these articles, it will tell you exactly what I want to write. Okay? It tells you you have to do it in this way. Number one, step number one, you have to do take the 500 kcm, multiply it by 11 sets, that will get you a 5500 kcm. Right? Um, so let me just put these in, in the brackets. Okay. The next step that you need to do is 5500 KCM more than 1100 KCM. If your answer is yes, which is, then you go to step number three. Step number three is you take the Five five zero zero and multiply it by this magic number, which is point one two five. Twenty. You multiply it by twelve and a half percent, that magic number, and this will get you size um, uh, six eight seven five, I believe. Six eight seven point five kcm. And the last step is to go find the actual size, because that's not standard size. Then you take the 6, 8, 7, 0.5. You take this one to chapter um, chapter number 9, table number 8. You go to chapter th number 9, table number 8, guys. I will give you the size is one conductor, and this baby is 700 kcm. One, this the main bonding jumper will be one big fat conductor, 700 kcm. Why shouldn't I? Can I parallel this? I can. Should I parallel it? No. Why? Because it's just a typically it's not going to be more than four or five feet. Not in a conduit, so it's easy to just tie it to the neutral from on this side to the ground from the other side. 99% of the time, Darren, if it's in a switch gear, it will be actually a big piece of of cover bar. So you don't size it. If it's a cover par bar, it will be sized by the manufacturer. You can parallel them. But there is no the reason why we parallel to make the installation easy. If you have a piece of 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 of, of, of cable six feet, I mean, what's the what's hard in installing it? You're not putting in a conduit. You're typically we don't. Bus bar, and actually that's what they do. That's what they do. It's become so they can go take this one and find a copper bus bar equivalent to it. Any question, guys? Any comments? Any question? I'm going to give you five minutes, guys, and then we're going to start with my two other examples. Thank you. Let's go um, to the next step here. Okay, I want you guys, this one is a no. We haven't done that before. Busway sizing. Why do I care about busway sizing? In the system that we guys have, our system, uh, the manufacturing floor, we do have two sets of loads. Do you guys remember the two sets of load that we have? One is bus duct that feed 208 system and bus duct that to feed 480. And you have just almost done with doing the calculation for your friend Chad and sizing the bus duct. You're almost done with sizing the bus duct. 
This will give you how to size the bus stocks based on just the bus stock itself, based on uh, doing it by hand. Okay, take this. Here's my bus stock. My bus, here's a, this is called a termination box at the end. So this is, everybody knows what a bus stock is. It's cover bars sandwiched together and enclosed in, a, in, in an enclosure, put in an enclosure. You're looking at typically six inches by six inches. Uh, depending on what, if it's big, it could be a foot by a foot, if it's 4,000 amp, and it goes, um, there's the feeder ones can go hundreds of, of feet. The, um, the brand circuit ones can go 50, 60 feet. So imagine each one of you guys is a machine and need to be fed. I have two options of feeding you fewer machines. Option number one, bring an EMT conduit to each and every one of you and feed you. Option number two is to run a bus stock right above you where the lights are, and from the bus stock take um, a cord, SO cord, exactly like this. Take an SO cord, exactly like this, from the bus stock, and right to my friend's head and feed him. Okay? So the bus stock will be right in here and feed each and every one of the two. What's the advantage of using a bus stock? You bring, you bring the power right to the loop, so there's no voltage drop. That's the most important thing about bus stops. In the state of, remember all these conduits taking from you all the way to the panel. That's one option. Imagine how much conduit, voltage drop, wires you need, versus bring the bus stop from the panel all the way up right above where the equipment are and just take uh, maybe eight foot uh, SO cord and feed each machine at a time with a disconnect and a feed. So for machines, manufacturing floors, that's the wiring of choice. Everybody understand? It's the wiring of choice. The project that we guys deal with right now is a manufacturing floor, so it will be the wiring of choice for us. So here's uh, Andrew as a machine. Here's Kerry. Here's uh, uh, Aaron, and here's Darren in this side, and in this other side, Joe. And we have uh, what else? We have we have Jeff, my friend. We have Zach, and we do have um, uh, Brian and Jamie. So each one of you guys, imagine the machine. You have a disconnect. And a fuse, exactly like that one on the wall. I have a disconnect and a fuse, and you take a load. So from here, if this is where the machine is located, what you do is you come from here with a, and feed your machines for that. Cool? And so, any question about the concept of the bus duct? First, we have a chapter that we're going to go up a little bit more details about the bus duct. Bus ducts in any secret book as are covered in Article 368. So that stuff that I'm going to do is coming basically from 368. Okay, questions about bus stocks? Let's look at the system that we have. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. I have 10 machines, 10 machines in a manufacturing floor, and I need to feed these 10 machines. So I put 10 disconnects, and that bus stock, the length of that bus stock is uh, 50 feet. Let's just say 50 feet. So from here, from here to here is 50 feet of bus stock. I size the 50 feet of bus stock. I, I, I put these disconnects, space them evenly where the machines are. And from each one, I took an SO cord to feed the machine. Cool? Now my job, uh, Jeff, is to go size that bus stock. Number one, the first thing I would like you guys to do is size the bus stock. What size bus stock do you need? Number two, <clears throat> the bus stock need to be fed, right, with a conduit. You have two options if you have a bus stock, guys. You bring the bus stocks from here all the way to the panel and feed it directly from the top of the panel. That's expensive. What they do mostly is they put the bus stock right at the top of the machine. At the end of the bus stock will be a junction box. From the junction box, they bring a conduit and a wire that feeds the bus stock. Cool? So this is a junction box here at the end of the bus stock and I'm bringing a conduit to feed this bus stop. So, because of that, I need to size the following. First, I need to size the overcapacitor device. Second, the conductor, the phase conductor. Third, the, uh, the, um, third, the phase conductor. So first, the bus stop. Second, the overcapacitor device. Third will be the uh, phase conductor is going to it. And fourth, the conduit. And fifth, the equipment grounding conductor that goes with it, the equipment grounding conductor, if any, if any. Any question guys about what we're trying to achieve? This is exactly what you guys are gonna do for your project. 
You're going to be sizing sections. You're going to have multiple sections. Multiple sections that you're supposed to size. This is one section. In your project, you guys are going to have one, two, three. Three of this. Three sections. What you size with me now is only the main section. You will come later on and size each and every one section inside this machine. Any question guys about this is one section of it that feeds only 10 machines. Shall we go here and size it? Now, these 10 machines are the following. Are they 10 or? Nine machines. Okay, nine machines. Um, five machines, 60 horsepower. Three machines, 75 horsepower. And one machine, 200 horsepower. And I have an extra disconnect for future use. Extra disconnect for future use. Cool? Can you guys imagine where they're going to be tied to these disconnect? Any question before I move on? Everybody understand the graphic? You guys have it? Okay, let's go ahead and size. All right, the first thing you need to do when you size these <clears throat> is find the amp. Now we size it, here's how I size it. Because it's, it's the, we're looking at bus docks, might as well use the amp. So, if you take the 60 horsepower, if you guys go to table 430.250, we have been there many times. Oh, by the way, the voltage system is what? Do we have the voltage system here? The voltage system is 480, okay? The voltage system of this bus is 480 volts. It's a 480 volt system. It could be any voltage, as a matter of fact. Okay, so 60 horsepower from 430.250 uh, under 480, you're going to find, or 460, you're going to find that the full load current for each one of them, at first I have five of them. I have to multiply the 5 by, what's the full load current of each one of them? 77. One more time. Each 60 horsepower motor under this, in this table, under the 460 or 480, will give me 77. Why do I multiply them by 5? Because I have 5 of them. Cool. Multiply by 5. Next. The same thing. I have 75 horsepower. I have 75 horsepower. Um, I have how many of them I have? I have three of them. Each one of these boys is running at 96 amps. 96 amps. These, by the way, these are amps. These are amps. The amps. The last one. <clears throat> now, which one of them is the largest? Which one of these uh, nine motors is the largest? This one. This one is the largest. The largest one. What do you do with the largest one amp wise? I'll be 25%. So, um, so here's one, and then I have to put 25%. Everybody understand why 25% on it? 25 times, what's the full load current of that baby? This baby is actually running at 240. 240, right? And multiply it, it's actually should be the, the following. <clears throat> we, we, should, we should multiply it first. How many of them do I have? I have one of them. Right? 1 times 240 times 1.25. 1.25. Everybody understand why the 1.25 is? Because that's the largest, fattest, fluffiest one. Okay, then add them up. The rest is history. Just add them up. Right? Take them and add them up. Add, do the math and add them up. <clears throat> you should come up with 973 amps. You should come up with 973 amps. Any question, guys? You did not add 25% on that? The, the machine, there was a lot of machine. It wouldn't make a difference when you size it. You're going to see. If properly, you have to do it this way. <clears throat> when you take your largest machine, just add it for the bus stock 25%. So. It have to be that brace or the brace that's that line? <clears throat> Absolutely. Technically, it doesn't make a whole lot of guys in the scheme, the big scheme of things. Look how many machines you have at 25% on one machine. One machine doesn't make a big difference, but that probably that's how you do it. I'll be 25%. Okay, nine seven, and you're going to see why in a second. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. So then you're going to take the then that's step number one basically. Everything that I've done here is step number one. Step number two, guys is to take the 973 amps that we have just got, DeWalt 3-13. Everybody knows, guys, if you go to DeWalt 3-13, 
Everybody can see where the bus stops are located, right? And right here, bus, uh, busways or bus stops. Three pairs, make sure you go to the three pairs. What's my next standard? <coughs> thousand. My next standard is a thousand in. <clears throat> so when you go order your bus duct, unlike panels, the, the sizes are different than the panel sizes. That's why we have them here. You go and order a thousand amp, 480, 277 bus duct. <clears throat> you might not need a, a neutral, by the way. You might not need a neutral for it. If everything three phase, do I need neutral? No. Any question guys about the bus stock? So my bus stock is a thousand amp. Let me know when I can move to the next one, please. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Next one is over construction device. Very easy. What you do for the over construction device is you take the same thing, 973 amps, okay? Take this number to 240.6 and size the over construction device. What's the over construction device from here? 1,000 amps. If it's not standard, what do you do? Go up. Raise my 1,000 amps. Cool? 1,000 amps. That's as easy as this. Okay, busway feeder, phases. Busway feeder for the phases. We're dealing the phases first. So since the overcurrent section, what, what I always say is match, match, overcurrent protection device. So how do you match overcurrent protection device? I have a thousand amp. I decided to use three runs, divide by three because it's too big to carry it. Three, three, three amps. If you take this one, guys, to table 310.15, B16, 75 degree column, you're going to end up with the following. You're going to end up with three sets, three sets. Why three sets? I already parallel. Three conductors. Each one of these conductors is 400 kcm, THHN, done. Done. Let's do the neutral. What do you think I'm going to do with the neutral? If you need a neutral, you might not need a neutral, guys. You might not need a neutral at all. If you don't need a neutral, you just don't pull a neutral. What decides if you need a neutral or not? Do you have a line to neutral loop? The example that we had, we had zero line to neutral loop. It would be a waste of money to pull a neutral. But if you need a neutral, that's how you size it. Again, you might not need a neutral. For the neutral, is piece of cake. You take the same thing, 1,000 amps. Remember how we did the first 200? Leave them alone. Anything um, higher, so the 1,000 minus 200, then multiply this baby by what? 0.7, and add them up. That will get me 760. 760 amps. 760 amps, right? That's my neutral load. Then, the next step is to go find the conductor. So 760 divided by 3, because I already paralleled the phase 3, that will give me 253 amps. Take this baby into table, table 310.15B16. Same table. That will give me the following. When you go there, that will give me three sets, three sets of how many conductors? One conductor. Each one of these conductors is 250, 250 KCMTHHN. So that's my, oops, that's my neutral. I know it's way at the bottom. Any question, guys? So three sets, why three? Because the phases are three. So you put one neutral with every set of phases. Now, Jeff, you might look at me and say, Chad, you're knucklehead pulling a neutral for this system. You're absolutely right. Typically, we don't pull a neutral, guys. The reason why we, these machines, we, if you have um, a, a manufacturing floor, you rarely, if ever, you run a single-phase system. 
Everything is three fifths system. Now, what what happens if the machine needs a light, right? The top of it. They take a little transformer, guys, inside the machine. Yeah, and they turn it into one twenty, and they get your light. Control. What happens if you need a, a twenty four volt or one twenty control? Same thing. A tiny little transformer with the machine inside the machine, manufactured. You are listed and get you the control. So you still use 480 for everything as a feeder, but inside the machine you can get other little voltages that you can use. Very typical. That's the best way of doing it. Okay. Okay. Shall we go to um, four? Let's go to four. Four is the conduit size. I already sized the conduit, and since I'm using the same insulation, so it shouldn't take us that long. So for sizing conduit space, and I'm emphasizing, so I have three conductors, number, the first thing is three conductors, number 400, KCM, this one, and it's THHN, this baby, same thing, chapter 9, table, uh, this is table 5, here's what I got, I have three times the cross-section area, is 0 0.586, 0 0.586. Okay, so I have another conductor, number 250, 250, KCM, THHN, same table, one conductor multiplied by 0 0.392, I believe, or 7, no, 97, can't even read my hand right, 97. Check that one, guys. 97. Then you add them up. When you add them up, you end up with uh, 2.155 square inch. And then the last step, my friend, that you do, the last thing, so this is step one. Step two is to take the 2.155 square inch. Take this one to chapter nine, table four. Oh, what type of conduit? Um, I decided to use EMT, by the way. EMT. You have to tell me what type of conduit. EMT, and this will get you 2.5 inch. How many of them, though? Three, three conduits. 2.5 EMT. <clears throat> cool? Same thing. Calculator is working. Okay, so what I'm trying to show here, guys, these three conductors, these conductors here will be actually these ones, and and I have uh, a neutral, which is this neutral right here. Okay, and I have three sets. Now, I said equipment grounding conductor, if needed, resize the conduit. If you have, if you want to put an equipment ground conductor. Um, Joe, then you have to resize. Do we? I need an equipment guard conductor with with EMT. No. Is EMT qualify as an equipment guard conductor? Yes. But if you decided to use it for more safety, then you have to resize your conduit. I'm gonna do the calculation for it though, but the conduit is not sized to house it yet. Okay. I'm going to go to the next one, the last one. Okay, I said equipment grounding conductor if needed, if needed. It's not needed with EMT. But you find the engineers that will specify it for more safety. If needed, here's what you need to do. You take the over current protection device, which is 1,000 amp. You take this one to a table 2 50.122, you remember that table, 250.122, and then you're going to end up with a 2 hot A W G. how many? Three, one in every condo, thank you, three. This is the reason why I size it. If you have an equipment ground conductor, guys, you size it fully and you put one with every run. You don't split it. 
you with one with everyone, one fully sized with everyone. One fully sized with everyone. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Now, obviously, if we are to do this, we have to go back and resize our condom. We're not going to do that. that that's why I said, if needed. <coughs> Is it required? No. By code. Engineers, some engineers uh, force you to put one equivalent ground conductor extra. If they do it, here's how we size it. Then you have to go resize your condom. Not a big deal. What type of insulation, if it's required, guys, they use, typically they use THHN insulation for them. Go up to three inch, if THHN. Sometimes they use covered conductors, just covered. Yeah. Can I switch to the last example, guys, and then let you uh, relax a little bit? Okay, all right, last one. I know it's Friday. And Fridays are not good days to harass people. Other than Friday, will be a good day. Okay, take this. This one is a U.S. bus dock. I have a bus dock. Can you guys see the bus dock that we, we do here? We have the phases and the notes on the ground. So inside it, typically, we have phase A, phase B, phase C, a neutral, and a ground. That's what the, these are bars sandwiched together. Okay, same thing. I do have a busway. This one I have six machines, it looks like, with disconnects. I need to find the following. Number one is the bus dock. Number two, the overcompression device. Number three is the feeder, the hot conductors. Um, number four, I believe, should be the conduit and the equipment ground conductor. I can't remember which, which is which here. So we have the, with the equipment ground conductor, the conduit, um, so we'll look at it in a second here. Okay, so next, here's the load that I have. I do have the following loads. I need, uh, the load is 10, I have 10, 10 horsepower, 7, 15 horsepower, 3, 40 horsepower, 4, 7.5 horsepower, 2, 5. Tons of them, right? Tons of machines fit from this bus. That's typical, guys. Very typical in bus stops. All machines, all horsepower. Okay, carry my friend, let's go ahead and, and cook that that thing. So, I'm going to go, the voltage, by the way, is 208. I want to remind you, the voltage is 208 volt three-phase system. All three-phase. Okay, so, let's start with the 10 horsepower. Um, I have, uh, for the 10 horsepower, let me use uh, blue this time. Okay, let's use green. For the 10 horsepower, I, each one of them is 30.8 multiplied by how many of them do I have? 10. Then we go to the 15. The 15 is 46.2 multiplied by how many of them do I have? 7. Uh, 40. Now the 40 are a little bit weird though. Now which one of them is the largest? Which, which conductor is the largest conductor? The 40. But I have three of them. Are all of them the largest or only one of them is the largest? One of them is largest. That's how we do it. Then you take one of them and you take 1.25 multiplied by the full load current of one of them is 114. Okay? Then plus, what's when you took one out of three, you're left with two. Then two times again, 114. Everybody understand why I split them? I took the largest one of them, add 25% on it, not on all of them, and then I add the rest of them. <coughs> okay? This is kind of a little bit confusing here. You took the three, took one of our three because these are the largest, right? Add 25% of that. Um, Jamie, that's why in the big scheme of things, guys, that 25% doesn't make a whole lot of difference, really. The big scheme of things. Yeah. So then um, I do have also the second one is, oops, let's use a, a different color here. So um, so I have 24.2 uh, multiplied by how many? Four. And the last one I have 16.7 multiplied by two. And add them all up. Add them up. Do all this math, add them up. When you add them up, you end up with 1132F. 
Aaron, how much the twenty five percent added? You said thirty amps. What's twenty five percent? It added twenty nine. Twenty nine amps. I just added twenty five percent of one of them. Yep. Okay, so that's the size that we need to size for it. Piece of cake, Chad. Then what do you need to do? You need to come over here and take the one, one, three, two. Take this one to three wall. Um, page 3 13, and that will get you 1200. Do we have a 1200 bus stop from the 1200 bus stop? 1200. Yeah. See how easy that is? Piece of cake. Let me go to the next slide. Should I? Oh, okay. Good? Everybody? All right. So let's go to the next slide. Next slide, guys, same thing, overcome tension device. The overcome tension device, that what I would do for overcome tension device, I would use the one, one, three, two amps. The same thing, take it to two, four, zero, dot six. These are the standard non-adjustable circuit breaker that will get you a 1200 amp. If it wasn't the standard, where do you go? You go up. We went up to 1200 amp. We went up. Okay. Then, Peter, for the bus wheel. What did they say here? Match over competition device. I don't know if you guys can see that. It says match over current protection device. That's how I always do it. Match over current protection device. Let's go ahead and match it. So that's number three, match over current protection device. So I have 1200 amp, divide by three. I decided to use divide by three. Give you 300 amps. Don't forget to go to table 310.15, B16, under 75 degrees. 400 amps. What type of math am I using here? 400 amps. What the heck? Oh, I'm sorry. I know what I did. You guys are stuck with me. I'm sorry. I know what, what. I use four. I divided by four. That's why. Yeah, you guys are stuck. I divided by four just, just to follow what I've done because all the sizes are based on four. Keep it under 600. That's why 300. Okay, so that'll give you 300, and then from there, you're going to end up with the following. You end up with four sets of, what's the conductor? Uh, how many conductors? Three, because the three pairs, um, uh, we have 350. 350 KT amps. Here's the sizes. Four sets of three conductors, 500 KC amps. Installation PHSM, PHSM. Let's do the neutral, will you? The neutral is a piece of cake, same thing. We use the, for the, we take the 1200 amp, take 200 out of it, and 1200 amp minus 200, multiplied by 0.7, and add them up. That will give me uh, 900, 900 amps. So that's my neutral. I'm going to size based on this neutral. If needed, most of the time it will not even be needed, guys. Okay? That will guarantee you 90% of your time bus stocks are three phase on. Okay, so we have 900. Then uh, you come over here. Then you have no option now. You take the 900, divide it by 4. That will get me uh, 225, 225 amps. <coughs> Same table, table 310.15, B16, 75 degree column. And if you guys go there, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get four sets, four sets of how many conductors? One conductor, uh, four aught, four aught. A, W, G, 
AWG and what's the installation? THHN. Everybody guys can see that used in, in red, my apology. The red, four sets of one conductor, four on AWG, THHN. The last thing is the equipped magnetic conductor and the conduit. Let me know when you guys are ready. The last thing is the equipped magnetic conductor. So you see my phases were 350 and my neutral is 4 out. So, Jamie, like I said, when you do a manufacturing floor, you just look at your loads, all of them in three phase, no neutral. So, that conduct, you saved, you see how much money is that saved? Not pulling a neutral. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next uh, uh, next step, my friends. Equipment grounding conductor. Equipment grounding conductor. If needed. Can I can I say right here, guys? If needed. The reason why I say if needed because I'm using EMT. With EMT, guys, we do not need an equipment grounding conductor, but some engineers specify it. <laughs> yep, all the way it goes through the conduit, tied to the bus stop from one end. From the other end, we'll tie to the panel. Okay, good idea on feeders. <laughs> yeah, so you'll have two grounds basically. Redundancy. Okay, so I have um, for equipment ground conductor, guys. I have 400 amp. Take this one to table 250.122. I'm almost done, guys. You can hold your horses for a second here. And then I, uh, if you guys go there, you need three odd. Right now it's a three odd. A W G T H H N. How many of them though? How many of them? Four. One with every conduit. One with every conduit. Yeah. Yeah. Four sets of one conductor. You're right. So one with every one with every conduit. Yeah, maybe that's the better way of doing it. Because we do sets, four sets of one conductor. But everybody understand what I see when I say four guys? Four sets of one conductor. Good point. Okay, let's go size the conduit, will ya? I need to size the conduit size, chapter nine, table five. Uh, let's start with the following. Three conductors, number. I have three conductors, number three. 50KCM THHN. This will give me 3 times uh, 0.5242. Check my work, will ya? Then I do have another 1 neutral multiplied by 1 neutral multiplied by my neutral is 4 odd. KCM, THHN, this baby is 1 times 0.3237. And the last thing, I have a ground, I want to account for, a ground, and my ground is 3 odd, 3 odd, KCM, THHN, and that will be one. That's where the one becomes one of them multiplied by uh, 0.2679. Uh, add them all up. When you get add them all up, here's what you're going to get, my friends. You're going to get um, 2.1642 square inch. Inch. That's step one. Step two on the last step, guys, is to take the 2.1624.
take this one to table number number four chapter number nine and that will get me the following that will get me four conduits each one of them is 2.5 inch EMT two and a half so each each one of these conduit guys will be 2.5 inch 2.5 inches 2.5 inches and this will be 2.5 inches any comments guys any questions any comments any questions I'm glad one of us is away. We're up to what? A W D A W D. I just got into the rhythm of putting K C L. You're right. Yeah. You guys you just let me let me go, Chad. Yeah, it's A W D. Thank you. Okay, the last thing guys, homework. Can I move on? Yeah, yeah. Brian, you good? <coughs> Okay. Okay. Homework number one. Uh, during my part, if you can give me one little thing, chance, please. Uh, here's homework number one, guys. I mean homework number three, because we I gave you two homeworks yesterday for the calc. Do you remember? This will be homework number three. The load is given in kVA. Do I need the power factor? Do I need to divide by anything else? So there's one <laughs> step done for you. Then, here's the voltage, 48277. The conduit is PVC schedule 80. Find seven items as in the exam. So this is the generator. So you're gonna find the seven items that we did under the generator exam. Cool? If, you, if you're gonna use the calculator, use it. Use the calculator. Okay. Yeah. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that one? The next example. The next example is a bus stop. I have a busway or a bus stop. The voltage is two eight one twenty. Remember the voltage always. The load is <laughs> I have V fifteen four twenty five twenty five and six fifty. Are you guys okay? And then uh, the conduit is EMT and the conductor is THHN. And please find all the items for that busway. Cool? Do on Monday. That's it. Thank you, guys. Can you go to the second slide of the presentation? Second? Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Hey, Chad. Do you want to use the thing off for 11 by 17? 11 by 17. You're, uh, you're, you're, um, E1 through E14 are 20, 11 by 17. Everything else is 8.5 by 11. Please print it. Make sure it's fully completed um, before you come because I want to grade it. Is this what you're looking for? Yeah. Okay. Thank you.